Bradley Wojtek loves brains, and he wants to get people's synapses firing about neuroscience. From here forward is the frontal lobe. So we're going to do a little bit of a, a, a Hannibal kind of thing. Does anybody want some frontal lobe? I'll take the first one. You'll take the first one? All right. Either future neuroscientist or future serial killer. I like it. <laughs> he never passes up an opportunity to share his passion. Last Friday, he dissected a jello brain at the Horrible Imaginings Film Festival. He also gave a presentation on neuroscience and zombies. Uh, this talk will contain clips of graphic violence, gore, and pictures of real brains. I can always, if I give a talk like this, I can always judge the audience by their response to that phrase. As a neuroscientist and a member of the Zombie Research Society, he's devoted to applying science to the zombie brain, which makes perfect sense to a zombie enthusiast like me. So if I give a public lecture to a bunch of high school students or something like that, and I talk about the role that ongoing neural oscillations play in biasing uh, neuronal firing in order to affect perception and cognition, people's eyes glaze over by the third word. Whereas if I go into a classroom and I start talking about why do zombies crave human flesh, what in their brains might make them do this, then people actually pay attention. And so it's just kind of a, it's a cheat, it's a trick. <laughs> to get people to accidentally learn something. Wojtek and fellow neuroscientist Timothy Versteinen tested this accidental learning theory by putting up a poster detailing research on zombie brains at the Society for Neuroscience conference in 2010. 35,000 neuroscientists from around the world come to attend this conference. And so we found a blank spot and we just hung up our fake poster there. It lit up the neuroscience Twitter sphere and tapped into an unexpected audience. And never once have I seen a security guard working at this conference reading a poster. But this guy was looking at it and, and laughing. And that was a very big moment for me, thinking, OK, this actually might entice people who aren't scientists a little bit into this. This was our first attempt at medicalizing the zombie condition. We called it Consciousness Deficit Hypoactivity Disorder, uh, a case study of CDHD. In their new book, Do Zombies Dream of Undead Sheep? They define CDHD as the loss of rational, voluntary, and conscious behavior. And in its place, there's an inability to coordinate motor linguistic behaviors and an insatiable appetite for human flesh and... Brains. Eating brains. How does that make you feel? It makes the pain go away. Wojtek's research was to watch zombie movies like Return of the Living Dead, then apply neuroscience to deduce why zombies behave the way they do. What do we know about how the brain coordinates movements? How is it that we are able to walk? How is it that we're able to talk? What do we know about this stuff? And then what can we infer about the zombie's brain based on how they behave? And so every chapter is a different symptom, walking, talking, but told from the perspective of zombie brains, but it's all modern neuroscience research and everything that we know about how these things happen. But decades ago, the scientist in the film Day of the Dead drew this conclusion. They are us. They are the extensions of us. They are the same animal, simply functioning less perfectly. There's always this issue of ultimately who are we and what makes us human. And zombies are us minus that spark of awareness. That's precisely why zombies make such a good metaphor. They represent the terror of losing one's identity and the fear of how a virus or disease could cause us to change so that we or our loved ones are no longer us. And to some extent, we, we encounter that, be it a loved one who doesn't remember us anymore uh, because of some disease like Alzheimer's, where you can see in real life there's something that can happen to cause someone to be not quite who you remember them to be. When not dealing with reanimated corpses, Wojtek is studying how groups of neurons communicate with one another in order to coordinate our behaviors. And sometimes, real science can be scarier than fiction. I mean, the more I learn about neuroscience and the brain, the scarier it becomes. I have to not think about how many different ways things can go wrong. But it's really exquisite. It's amazing that this works. And I think it's one of the biggest problems we, ha we, we can tackle as a scientist. Um, obviously, I'm biased because I love this field. Wojtek wants to inspire others to love science the way he does. And he's hoping zombies, with their insatiable appetite for brains, will be an invaluable teaching tool. Beth Accomando, KPBS News.